Hi, I'm Nick Powell, City Hall Bureau Chief with City and State. Joining me on today's City and State TV is Richard Orance, the Senior Counsel at McKenna Long and Aldridge, and the Chairman of Infralinks Capital. Thank you for joining us today, Richard. Thank um, you. So we are, we, uh, City and State is holding, hosting a, an infrastructure event on the on May fifteenth. Um, so ahead of that, I thought maybe we could touch on uh, public-private partnerships and and how it relates to. New York City and state. So I guess I know you've done a lot of work with with P3s as they're as they're called, um, both here in in the United States, but also abroad. Why has this model been slow to take hold in in New York City? Um, is there is it is it politics? Is it logistics? What's what what goes into uh, into that? Nick, that's a terrific question. First, thanks for interviewing me. It's it's an honor to have a chance to speak to New York State. Um, it's a very complex answer, but can be simply answered by our founding fathers, Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton created a system where the regional interests would come back and lobby the state and the national interests. So we're a country of shared interest, and everybody gets to present their viewpoint. Abroad, these matters have, around the world, been easier in Vietnam or Brazil or Europe than here. There's a more uniform system, it's easier. In Canada, it's a very simple system. Um, there's a framework that's there. Here, everybody has a different agenda, a different approach. And in order to close one of these deals in the United States, you have to bring together at least 12 different groups to agree, from the politicians through the bankers. So there are tariffs and domains. Um, second part of that is, of course, New York City is the finance capital of the world. And what we're talking about in P3 is private capital. Uh, there is a huge public finance market, the center of which is New York City. And so that capital is now extremely cheap, cheaper than private capital. So the combination of the political interest and the cheap public capital makes it very hard for public-private partnerships in New York and in the country. Interesting. Now, that being said, I understand that, you know, I mean, any, any major infrastructure improvements, chances are some of that is going to trickle down to the taxpayer, right? So whether that's through tolls or, or fare increases when we're talking about the MTA or higher taxes elsewhere. Now, where, so there seems to be, in other words, there's a ceiling, right, to how much the uh, how much you can really expect the taxpayer to to shoulder the burden when it comes to funding infrastructure improvements and that would seem to be an argument to be made for the for the private sector to come in right so where does where does that kind of i mean how do you kind of reconcile you know keeping the taxpayer in mind but also you know not wanting to um again it depends on the perspective but the if you look at the american civil engineering society who have done endless studies on this. For every hundred million dollars of private capital, there's seven million dollars saving in life cycle costs. So, you know, we, we have bridges in the region that have fallen down, like in, in my home state in Connecticut, the Mianus River Bridge. That caused 13 billion dollars of economic damage in four lives from four hanger pins that were rusted out. So private capital will save substantial advantages in life cycle costs, making it cheaper for the public overall. But most cities and states and very few politicians count that. Um, the now favorite model for P3 is availability payments, which means that the passenger, so take a toll bridge, doesn't usually pay. The state pays from its budget for that bridge or that road being available to the public. The state can then charge tolls if it wants. In, in, in our region here, we have the Tri-State Authority and we, we've had tolls for a long time. Um, a very good example of a public problem was in Chicago parking, which the first big parking deal, as soon as the private sector took over the parking, they raised the rates so high there was a public outrage. That's because the deal was overpriced. It was a lot, a lot of money. It's the only way to recoup it. So if you get a deal that is priced right, 
uh, and it has a balance of the risks. So there are still some things the public sector has to do that the private sector doesn't have to do. The increase in tolls, et cetera, can be not bad. It can be fair. It's the value of time. How much are you willing to pay to cross a bridge with less traffic or a road with less traffic? Right, right. Now, I wanted to ask you specifically about, um, I mean, we, we have a couple of, of, of major infrastructure projects that are currently being, uh, currently being constructed, but also potentially in the works for the future, one of which is the Tappan Zee Bridge. Um, the other is LaGuardia Airport, which is obviously, in, in, as anybody who travel, has traveled through, is in great need of, of improvements. So can you maybe take us through, starting with LaGuardia, the, where the, a, a P3 might be able to come in and, and, and help um, expedite the, the, the infrastructure improvements needed okay. for, for that airport. Thank you. If you permit me, Nick, to uh, actually throw a third in the mix, Gothels. Absolutely. And start with Gothels. Um, Gothels is a great model. Uh, it, it's been well received and well done. And it didn't go off as a P3. It went off in what is a much more advancing model in the States. It went off as a design, build, finance, maintain. So there, and in that case, in Gothos, Kiewit and DOR came in and they did it and it's proceeding well. It was procured well. The people who lost felt that it was fair and it's, it's a very nice representative project for New York State. Um, LaGuardia also is going well. There are several major consortium there are only truly a handful of major national and international players that can do a multi-billion dollar project like LaGuardia or Tappan Zee. And under the Port Authority that's doing well, the head of the project in the Port Authority came out of Goldman Sachs. He knows, uh, he knows the sector well. He understands the private sector needs. And it's been, at least from what we've seen, a very good balance of risk and reward for the private sector and not. In each of the consortium, there are multiple partners, some providing the money, some providing the contracting, some providing the operations. They all come together under the leadership of the, of the sponsor consortium. And at this point, the handful of truly national and global players understand very well what they're doing. And when the governmental side, such as in LaGuardia, understands what it's doing, you get a good balance. Ultimately, in these projects, there's a ton of money. There are 97 global infrastructure funds. There are billions of dollars, uh, trillions of dollars, literally. There is a lot of technology. There's the ability to build, the ability to engineer. What really is needed to get these P3 deals done is the ability to bring all the parties together in a negotiated way, and that's where they all fall apart. There are many examples of broken deals in the country. Fortunately, New York is not in that category. That's interesting. I actually wanted to ask you about that. When you talk about the Gothels, I mean, that's, I would, I would assume that's both New York and New Jersey state governments are involved, and then with with the airport, you're dealing with probably the federal and state government, right? And it, so, I mean, is, is that level of, of coordination getting all, all the parties together on the same page? Could you kind of take us through maybe a little bit of, of that that process? I mean, is it, are, are you dealing with the same people mostly from project to project when, when you're talking about different states, or is it just, you know, is, are there just constant levels of red tape to cut through? It, it, it's a terrific question. Let me give an example. Uh, not here, but in, in Europe. And we, we started, we really created this model. It's called VOT in Europe. And not too far along, the Chancellor in Austria asked for help to get into the European Union. He had to build more traffic north to south. There were environmental problems. So he decided to dig a tunnel under all of Austria, $42 billion. And he hired us to do it, and we brought in Goldman Sachs. There were three countries. So three countries, three departments of transportation, and so on. After a year and six months of working, we could not even agree on the gauge. 
so it never happened. But in the meantime, four railroads got built in Austria, so Austria got what it wanted. So there's often a political agenda. Um, I'll come back to New York, but if you take the Pennsylvania Turnpike, um, Governor Rundell put that project out knowing that it could never get done. There was an internal battle between the parties and who wanted to be the next governor, and there was a battle over slow track or fast track procurement, and many of the private sector people spent millions of dollars bidding on something that could not politically happen. So your question is a good one. Um, you have the state governments, departments of transportation, then you have the local municipal governments, their departments of transportation, and then you have all the stakeholders, which includes everybody from labor through business. And there are some critical success factors which I think took place in Gothels and also are in LaGuardia and uh, in Tappan Zee. First, there has to be some leadership and some vision. You need somebody on the government side to be in charge and say, this is what I want and stay to it. You need a fair procurement process and it needs to be as streamlined as possible. New York has done a good job with that. Um, you need to then have some recognition of the local community that is involved. So if you look at the Tappan Zee Bridge to go where you wanted to go, in 1955 when the original bridge was done, a lot of personal property was just destroyed without concern. So New York has put quite a bit of money, uh, $20 million into community relationships and have been very careful to stay in the footprint of the bridge, the alignment, to take as little property as possible. There are still people who are upset, but there's buy-in to the process. So bottom line, you've got to get the state, the local government, you have to get all the stakeholders, which can be from labor through the community that is there. You have to get everybody to buy into the vision and see benefits. The harder part of that is the political part, and because we go back to Alexander Hamilton and everybody's running for office, depending when it comes out, if a project comes out with a new governor with a term to go, there's a likelihood he will stay the course and the project will get done. Uh, they're clearly getting the politics aligned is a major, a major task. So it's safe to say an election year is not necessarily the optimal time to bring together <laughs> all the parties involved in P3 projects. As Infralinks, we will not bid on a project in an election year. <laughs> Smart move, probably. Uh, Richard Orrance, the Senior Counsel at McKenna Long and Aldridge, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me.